Hello and welcome to Nature Scene. I'm Jim Welch with naturalist Rudy Mankey, and today we'll be hiking through an Appalachian Cove forest in the Blue Ridge province of South Carolina. It's early spring and the wildflowers should be beautiful today, Rudy. And the Appalachian Mountains are so special and, and the forests here, Jim, are very, very diverse. We're going to see how lots of wildflowers get an early start here before the trees get leaves on them and shade them out. That's part of our story today. And another kind of interesting part of the story is the connection between this part of the world and China and Japan. Now that may sound far-fetched, but many of the tree species, especially here, and some of the herbaceous plants, have relatives only in China and Japan and nowhere else in the and world. What makes that connection? Well, it seems so far apart that it wouldn't make sense, but during tertiary times, right as the dinosaurs were dying out, uh, continents were a little closer connected than they are today, and a forest developed in uh, North America and Europe and Asia that was basically the same kind of forest. Genetic information was passing from one continent to another, and since then those areas have shifted apart, separating a little bit. Ice has come from the north and wiped out most of that forest in what's now Europe, but the Appalachian Mountains going from north to south and mountains in China and Japan going from north to south allowed these plants to move away from the ice and preserve the forest that would be all gone if it were not for these mountains. Well, here's a wide abundance right here, great variety. Lots of plants. I think today will be the time to see some of these plants getting a start. The one that's so common on this bank, unquestionably, is one called Poor Robin's Plantain. And it's in a group, usually we call those the composites or the aster family. When you look at that, it looks like one flower, but those little projections on the side, instead of being individual petals, are actually individual flowers. They're called ray flowers. And then there's a whole cluster of tiny little flowers in the center, usually referred to as uh, disc flowers. So, you know, a lot of flowers together would be a composite, and that's what that's called. That's the earliest, one of the earliest flowering uh, composites in this part of the world. Rudy, here's a favorite of mine. It's, it's the green and gold. And a good common name, right? Makes good sense. And again, you can see that's another composite, isn't it? See, those aren't petals. Those are actually ray flowers there. And then those flowers packed in the disc. For butterflies, of course, other insects, that's very attractive because you've got lots of flowers to visit instead of just uh, one. And again, that's typical of these moist, sloping hillsides in the spring. Now, another one down here. Look at the, uh, look at the trillium here. Sweet little Betsy is one of the common names for that, but a trillium, and look at the flower on that very distinctly, three parts to that flower. Three um, petals there, colored, three sepals there, and then look at those mottled leaves around the uh, base. Sometimes the petals are kind of that maroon color. There's one over there, Jim, you can see that has yellow uh, petals instead of that, uh, that maroon. Further up the bank on the hillside, there's a, yeah, look, another yellow flower. Yeah, look, yeah, look at the way it's dangling down there. It's kind of an amazing shape to the flower. Bellwort is one of the common names. It's in the lily family. And one of the strange things about it is notice the way the stem comes up there and actually looks like it's going through a leaf. Uh, that's an amazing little uh, way of having a leaf without really a stem on the leaf. It's wrapping around the, uh, the stem of the plant. Perfoliate leaf, so Uvularia perfoliata is the species name. Interesting plant, typical of the spring. In addition to all the activity here with the flowers, over here are the trees that are showing some blossoms. Yeah, and there is a tree now that has flowers even before the leaves come out, usually. Common name for that is red bud, although it's really more of a pink, isn't it, than a, than a red. But a uh, very, very interesting tree. Uh, Judas tree is another name that you hear that uh, called every now and then. Never gets tremendously large more of an understory plant, but flowering this time of year. And with the canopy gone, it's easy to see this oh, uh, woodpecker goodness. up Look here. Look at that. Look at that. Right on the hickory, right in front of us. And you can see those lines of holes uh, drilled earlier by the woodpecker. And now that yellow-bellied sapsucker is the name for that one, is coming and getting sap from those holes. It's a male. You can see it's got red on the top of the head and also red on the throat. The female would have white on the throat. Look at the way it uses its tail, too, to kind of prop it up against the tree. And these are all their holes. Yeah, yeah, they come back. Again, the sap is oozing out. They, they feed on the sap and also probably, uh, you know, insects that are trapped in it. But yellow-bellied sapsucker is the common name. Really, it makes pretty good sense. It does have a yellowish belly, and it does feed, as the name implies, on sap. But this is probably home for that, and it's got holes drilled in lots of trees and just comes and goes from tree to tree. 
finding a free meal in the forest. Let's just follow this trail a little further. I'm sure there's lots more to see.